you know, back to the whole Lawrence Park thing. Once we got settled into Lawrence Park, I, uh, you know, I finally started getting to to a stride where I was making friends and I could keep those friends. And it seemed like uh, Lawrence Park was just the ultimate mixture of cultures because you had you had a lot of um, low income white kids that couldn't afford to live in the burbs because they, you know, they came from trail parks, they came from wherever. And then you had a lot of, of black kids that came up from Detroit who, you know, they really probably couldn't afford to live in the burbs either, but that was the one ticket to get out of the city. So you had a mixture of cultures that lived in there. And before I moved to Michigan, I mean, I don't mean that in no funny way, but black people were like, black people, folks were like fucking aliens to me. I knew no black people. I lived out in the country, you feel me? So to move in there is kind of a culture shock, shock. you know, you mix with all these different people. And uh, it was it was the best experience of my life though, for the simple fact that I picked up a little, a little bit of everything. I mean, Lawrence Park, if, shit, if you, if you lived in Lawrence, if you lived in Lawrence Park back in the, the late eighties, early nineties, you pretty much, I mean, you, you was this fucking close from being homeless and you knew it. As kids, everybody lived in Lawrence Park, they were like, everybody lived in there were single parent, you know, children. A place like Lawrence Park, a community like that, where it's low income, you get all kinds of people that, that live in there. You get, you know, people that, you know, they let their, their cousins stay with them and they ain't got no money neither. Everybody, it's just like a friggin' flop house. A lot of, you know, people abuse the system. They, they'll have a whole bunch of people in there living with them. You get people coming out, um, setting up spots to sell dope. I mean, when I was, when I was 13 years old, I remember walking with this guy, I ain't gonna say his name, but um, he had he had like Jerry Curl or whatever, you know, back in the day. It was cool. And we're walking, we're walking. I was, like I said, probably about 12. And and this uh, cop rolls by us, you know. And the the guy's all kind of like, you know, don't act funny, don't act funny, just just keep walking, man. I don't, I don't want these cops harassing us, man. I don't want, and I was like, what the fuck is wrong with this guy, man? So then the cops pull off. Dude takes his takes his hat off and he starts shaking shaking his hair, and these these little white rocks fall into his hat. He's like, you know what that is, man? You know what that is? And I'm like, nah. He's like, that's money right there, man. He's like, that's money. And that was uh, I didn't realize it at the time what it was, but that was the first time I ever saw crack cocaine. And uh, that was the type of, of shit that I was surrounded by sometimes in Lawrence Park. I mean, I had. You know, it was one of those things where, like I said, it was a mix of black and white kids, and a lot of the kids my age were white kids. I hung out with a lot of white kids, but there was also older black kids that lived, or, or adults even that lived in there. And uh, sometimes you look up the you look up the older people to when you don't have a, when you don't have a father figure in the house, you'll look at older people, older guys, and just study them. You know, I found everyone interesting I would I would you know I was a quiet kid I would sit and observe and uh, I'd sit there and I'd watch people's mannerisms watch how they conducted themselves and mind you a lot of these people I mean some people were more or less they're they're like small-time dope dealers you know what I'm saying they might push weed someone might push a little crack and everything like that but that's not something that they put in in my face like well this is what we do but they, they were hustlers you know what I'm saying so I would sit there and I, I observe these are the these older cats I'm talking about, these are the guys that I would watch. And just, you know, watching people's mannerisms just because, you know, you don't know nothing about being a man. You ain't got no father figure in the house. So, like I said, you look to older guys and see what they're they're doing. And a lot of these guys had a hustler's mentality, some of them, you know. And